In this series, our team will be filming our travels all over the state of Ohio, documenting our experiences while featuring a variety of locations and showing the communities around them. We're starting in our hometown of Ripley, hoping to showcase what we have in this community. Our goal is to highlight the town's historical involvement in the Underground Railroad and include those businesses keeping it alive today. You'll find the village 50 miles southeast of Cincinnati along the Ohio River Scenic Byway, the longest national scenic byway in the United States. Ripley is home to a 55-acre historic district that was included in the National Register of Historic Places in 1984. Perfect for all those architecture and history buffs out there. We begin this episode at the town's longest surviving restaurant, Cohart's River House. Established in 1987, Cohart's has been a staple of the town's riverfront for over three decades. Its welcoming interior has a right-at-home sort of feeling, while its staff and delicious food make you feel like a friend and keeps you wanting to come back. This was our team's first time dining out together, and making that memory here at Cohart's is something we will certainly treasure. This next stop is one of our favorite hangout spots here in town, and we've gotten the opportunity to talk to Brookie's owner, Darren Brookbank, about his business. Come up for sale there, you know, three years ago. You know, ideas just started rolling. What I wanted to bring back to this place was uh, the atmosphere, the fun times, you know, the memories. You know, just the way it used to be. Shut down the streets in the summer, have some street parties, fundraisers for our Heritage Festival. We've, we've got a band just about every Saturday night, and it's anything from Southern rock to rock and roll to uh, country. Got Harry Pettigo comes in, he's bluegrass picker. Uh, you know, we just, we try to do things different than everybody else, and uh, just kind of hope somebody can see what I've done here, and uh, kind of say, hey, if he can do it, we got some... Uh, other empty buildings around here, we can take and we can do it. We can t turn them into a restaurant. We can uh, just do anything like that, you know, just something with them besides sitting there vacant. So. Well, I recall those times as a deck hand on the river. Darren made a point that really resonates with our town's current situation. There are so many buildings sitting empty and encouraging new businesses to come into our community and getting the people from here and those travelers passing through to do business in our town is important for returning Ripley to its former glory. People often overlook so many small businesses in our town and instead travel to nearby locations up to a half hour away to purchase what they need instead of supporting those local places. There are so many small businesses in this town that bring their own unique qualities to the table. Shops that have been in business for a number of years and those that are new to the town all need support of our citizens. Sadly, we simply can't include every location in Ripley, but we want to include as many places as we can and give people the opportunity to tell us about what it is they do. For these next two locations, we've had the opportunity to talk to James Love about his machine shop and Phil White about Bristow Pharmacy. All right, my name's James Love and uh... I've been doing metal work most of my life. I've always liked making metal craft stuff. Seven years ago, I built a little building in my backyard and bought a lathe and a mill, and just little old stuff, and started making parts, and it just grew and grew. I moved from my little shop down here to Main Street. This is, this is it, this is what I do every day. We do all kinds of metal work. If it's metal, we work with it. Bristow Drug Company was founded by Herndon Bristow. Everybody called him Doc Bristow in 1912. And then as he retired, there were four men that, that bought him out, one of which was my great uncle. And then that's how it got in, into my family. And then my family had it from about 84 until 96 when the current owners, Bob and Gail Waters, purchased it and have run it ever since. Shops like the Ripley Florist are what really create an atmosphere around small towns. The interior of Linda South storefront is beautifully laid out. Having a specialty shop like the Ripley Florist that also has a variety of decor and seasonal items makes a quality addition to this town. Linda has been in business for nearly 30 years, and her involvement in this community between the florist and her work in the local government has been substantial. Stopping in and seeing her store and Penny the Shop Cat is something we really recommend. Cummins. 
praise the Arden Bar. John P. Parker was a former slave who bought his own freedom at the age of 18 by working in a foundry. His home was designated a National Historical Landmark in 1997. The John P. Parker Historical Society has rehabilitated the house for use as a museum. John Parker was taken from his mother and sold when he was only 8 years old. He developed his education while he worked as a stable hand, taking care of horses for a doctor in Mobile, Alabama. The doctor's sons taught John to read and write, even though it was illegal to teach slaves. After purchasing his freedom at the age of 18, John Parker would eventually move to Ripley, Ohio in 1849. Ripley was a hotbed for abolitionist sentiment in the antebellum period. John Parker was an abolitionist and a conductor on the Underground Railroad, helping escaped slaves seek freedom. The museum serves as a staple to the history of our town and is certainly a location to check out. They traveled so fast, their smokestacks blazed red hot. Just a few blocks up from the Parker House on US State Route 52 is the old piano factory antique shops. The shop is housed in the former Ohio Valley Piano Company factory, which opened in 1969. Luth Bloyer started the antique store on Labor Day of 1978. For 40 years, the old piano factory has housed some of the most unique antiques this side of the Ohio River. We're standing on the porch of the new visitor center for the John Rankin House in Ripley, okay. and I am the site manager, Betty Campbell, and I want to welcome everybody to one of the most historic houses in the state of Ohio, the home of Reverend John Rankin, an underground railroad conductor and Presbyterian minister. Rankin House itself is a national historic landmark. That's the highest designation our federal government can give to a historic site. It means the people who lived here, the events that took place here, have significance throughout the United States. Reverend John Rankin, his wife Jean, and their 13 children operated an underground railroad station here on their farm on a hill overlooking the village of Ripley, the Ohio River, and the Kentucky Hills. Over a 40-year period, he and his family aided approximately 2,000 fugitive slaves, and Rankin also wrote in his autobiography, I never lost a passenger, meaning fugitive slaves in the care of the Rankin family were never caught by their owners or by bounty hunters and taken back into slavery. The house was recently restored, and one of the interesting things that happened during the restoration is we discovered two of the rooms in the house originally had stenciling on the walls. So we were able to recreate the patterns in both of the rooms. So today, Rankin House is much more historically correct uh, than it has ever been, and that's thanks to the restoration project that was done by the Ohio History Connection. The Rankin family were friends with the Beecher family in Cincinnati, best known because of their daughter, Harriet Beecher Stowe, and they share some of their stories of aiding fugitive slaves in their escape and on their way to freedom. One of those stories was an episode of a young woman across the river in Bracken County, Kentucky, who had learned she was going to be sold. She decided if she was ever going to escape, this was her only opportunity. She's living very close to the Ohio River. It's in January, it's cold, the Ohio River had been frozen, and she makes her escape. Well, let's fast forward several years. Harriet Beecher Stowe is married, She's living in the New England states, and she writes this major best-selling novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin. And one of the main characters in the book, Eliza, is based on the woman I just told you about. The reaction we received from our community for the introduction of this series was unbelievable. Receiving over 21,000 views from over 700 shares was beyond any of our expectations. We want to thank each and every one of you for engaging with us. Be sure to check out our website and YouTube channel and follow our content. Our next episode will air on Saturday, November 3rd. Thank you for tuning in and we look forward to sharing with you more of our experiences.